Um, my f three favorite hobbies are doing arts and crafts, origami, and track and field. If I were any animal in the world, I'd be a cat, because I like cats. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh kids. My name is Aisha. I'm 10 years old, and I'm in fifth grade. Um, if I were an animal, I would be a cat, or I would be a bird. My first favorite hobby is painting and drawing. I also like to write stuff and calligraphing. So I'm also like hoping to become an author someday. My second favorite hobby is video editing. My third favorite hobby is baking. I really like the texture and the smell of the cake. Ramadan Mubarak! Bye! Make sure to turn on a timer so you don't wake up late for Sahari! Assalamu alaikum. My name is Dora Fatima. My favorite hobby is to paint. And you can see here, this is my first painting. And then this one is my really first painting. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Asher. I'm five years old and I'm from Canada. I'm Zoya. I'm in second gay grade and I love to draw and do craft and I love new kids. Assalamu new kids. My name is Amna. Assalamu alaikum new kids. My name is Walid. I'm 12 years old. I'm seven years old. My three favorite hobbies are biking, roller skating and playing dodgeball. Mine is to watch TV and play with my Lego and play soccer. If I were any animal, I'd be a do I'd be a dolphin because they are pretty cool in my opinion, and they get to explore the underseas. I would be a tiger because they're scary and also they they run fast. Assalamu alaikum, Noor kids. My name is Fatima. I'm nine years old. Uh, my three favorite hobbies are writing, I like singing nasheeds, and I also like biking. And if I were to be any animal in the world, I'd be a bunny. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Rida, and I'm 12 years old. My three favorite hobbies are that I love to bake stuff, and I like and I like sports, and I like to read stories about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions. If I were any animal in the world, I would be a cat. Allah Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Manha, and some of my hobbies are um, crocheting and reading. I love reading a lot. Anyway, thank you. Hello, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Jirna al Najjar. My full full name is Jirna Ali Ali Atiyah Ali Najjar. I'm from Egypt, but I'm now in Canada, Alberta, Edmonton. My dream when I when I become older is to be a teacher in Rockets. Assalamu alaikum, Noor kids. My name is Renak. My name is Mohaina. I am eight years old. I am five years old. <laughs> My three favorite hobbies are running, gymnastics, and drawing. My favorite hobbies is running, playing with my stuff, and playing with my friends. If I could be any animal in the world, I would be a koala because they sleep all day. Uh, if I could be any animal in the world, I would be a peregrine dog because their dive is um, 240 miles per hour. Assalamu alaikum, my kids. My name is Leila and I am 13 years old. Three of my top favorite hobbies are creative writing. And by the way, I'm writing a book which will inshallah be published in 2026. I also love poetry, which I'm also going to be publishing a poetry book in 2027-2028, and coding. If I were to be any animal, I would be a wolf because they're courageous, strong, and kind, just like me. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Zahra and I am nine years old. My three favorite hobbies are hanging out with my friends, drawing, and playing on my iPad. And if I would be any animal, I would be a bird. Wa assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
My name is Sophia. I'm nine years old. My three favorite, three favorite hobbies are arts and craft, painting, and doing work in my free time. And I have to. And if I were to be any animal in the world, it'd be a hummingbird because they are fast and they can fly. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. My name is Zainab, and I'm six years old. And my favorite animal is a giraffe. And and um. Um, my favorite thing is I like to play with my toys. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Mahdiya Tasneem. I'm, su- I'm studying in second standard. I am from India and I'm I'm, si- I'm seven years old. My favorite thing is fasting in Islam and I'm happy to be part of this event. Hi. My name is Faiha. I am eight years old, and um, the three of my hobbies are writing, reading, and doing arts and crafts. And if I could be an animal, I would be a duck because I really like ducks and they're my favorite color, which is yellow. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Sophia. I live in Qatar, and I'm five years old. I really love to do math, and also read books and play with my friends and also if i were be an animal i would be a cat because they're really sweet and uh, gentle and when they do it means that they like me and i really like them also and bye i said the criminal kids my name is Zara and it's pronounced Zara. I am 11 years old but I'm almost 12. My top three favourite hobbies are um, basketball, crocheting and posting on my YouTube channel. And if I was any animal in the world, I would probably be an owl, a snake or an axolotl. Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Razina. I am 7 years old. My favourite hobbies are trying new dishes, art and crafts, and helping others. If I get a chance to be become an animal, I would like to become a cat. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum no kids. My name is Karen and it's pronounced Karen. And I am 8 years old. My hobbies are, drum roll please. Wow, this is more of a talent than a hobby. I have a doctor. Assalamu alaikum, no kids. kids. My name is Hania. I live in Toronto, Canada. My three favorite hobbies are reading, uh, Dave Pelkey books, uh, such as Dogman books, uh, and I like to play, pretend play with my father. And most I like is making pop up cards and um, art and crafts. And I want to be a cat because I like hunting and I have catty ears. Assalamu alaikum, no kids. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Sarim. I am 10 years old. My favorite hobbies are soccer, math, and reading. And if I would be any animal that I want, I would be a lion because people say it's the king of the jungle. Bye. Can playing soccer be an act of worship? Well, today we are going to be reading out of this book called For the Sake of God. After that, we are going to be meeting the youngest state senator in Minnesota history. 
Her name is Senator Zainab Muhammad. And after that, we are going to be giving away millions and millions. Let's begin. I'll never forget the time when we almost bought a car from the internet. Let me explain. I was about 12 years old when my brother came home one day and announced to my family that we were going to be buying a car from the internet. My dad was eating soup and as he heard my brother, he almost spit it out. He said, what? A car from the internet? My brother said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, Dad. I've checked it out, and it looks great. My dad couldn't believe it. He said, I don't know. I don't really trust the internet. But we went to go take a look. My brother brought us to his computer, and he pulled up eBay Motors, and on it, there was a Nissan 300ZX. Ooh, boy, it looked good. It was a two-seater heater. It said that it was twin turbo, four-wheel steering, and T-tops. As my brother was scrolling through the photos, Allahu Akbar, it was candy apple red. It shined like a diamond, and it even looked fast. But my dad said, it doesn't matter how it looks on the outside. What matters is what's on the inside. So we packed up our Dodge Caravan and we began the journey to Nina, Wisconsin. Yep, Nina, Wisconsin. We had to drive almost four hours to this car that my brother had discovered on the internet so that we could give them thousands and thousands of dollars and purchase it. And when we got to the guy's house, oh boy, the car looked even better in person. Allahu Akbar, the wheels, they were twinkling and glistening. When we opened up the car, it smelled like Jannah. But again, my dad said, it doesn't matter how the car looks on the outside. What matters is what's on the inside. He told the man who was selling the car that we needed to take it for an inspection. And so we drove it to the dealership, the Nissan dealership, where an expert began opening up the hood and looking at every piece of it. And after he finished, he came out and he said, ladies and gentlemen, thank the Lord you did not purchase this car. This car is riddled with issues. Its engine is about to destroy. It is a ticking time bomb. And that day, I did learn a very important lesson. It doesn't really matter what things look like on the outside. What matters more is the inside. Now, the reason why I'm telling you this is because every time we do something, whether it is something like performing our prayers or fasting or playing soccer or basketball. Behind that action is an intention. The reason why we do it. And if that intention is pure, then our whole life can become worship. And that is what we are going to be talking about today. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. My name is Brother Amin Asr, and I'm the leader here in the Muslim Treehouse, where every single week throughout the entire year, 
we do programs on Thursdays and on Saturdays, not just during the month of Ramadan. And by the way, I'm also the author of the New York Kids series of books. But enough about moi. Let's say salams to some of you. All right, let's see who we've got here today. I see Hadia from the United Arab Emirates. Allah! I see Ayub from Calgary. I see Amal Isa and Noor from Ann Arbor, Michigan, who've got their book. I see Asma from Qatar. I see Layla, Yusuf, and Coco Pickles. Allah, Coco Pickles! Umar from New Jersey, Arwa from Minnesota, I see Hiba and Aisha from Texas, I see Minty from Oklahoma, I see Jenna from Delaware, I see Usaid from Vancouver, I see Rabia who's holding up something that says Noor, I see Zoya from Morocco but in the UK, I see Reha and Zainab from Philadelphia. I see Umar from Toronto who's got his Noor kids back back. Allah. Okay, you guys, I can't just say salams all day. I cannot. I cannot. Although I was just talking to Brother Jake about what we were going to do tomorrow because tomorrow is the last day of our Ramadan camp. No! No! Not yet, not yet. Tomorrow's the last day. Let's save the crying for tomorrow. Maybe we'll just say, we'll do a whole program of just saying salams. I hope not, no. No, the reason we are here is not to ask a small question or even a medium-sized question. No, in fact, we have a big question. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to worship? And how can we make our whole lives worship. That is what we are going to be talking about today. Now before I do that, I do have to take a look at this guy over here, okay? You know, our um, giveaway box, all right? Let me just see what's inside in here real quick. Oh my god, are you serious? No! And, and the noise worked too. Let's see if it works again. Let's see if it works again. Oh, ho, ho, Allah, you guys, this is, I don't think we should do this today, Jake. This is too much. We should save it for tomorrow. You think we should save it? You do? No, we should do it today. <laughs> you guys, dude, we are, man, we're getting better every day. That was amazing. Um, all right, anyways, the giveaway is awesome. We're going to show it to you at the end, but... Let's mosey on over to the library, or some like to say La Biblioteca, for us to get started with the storytelling. Alright, so look, I did mention to you that today is the second to last day of the Ramadan camp. And that might make some of you sad. And honestly, it should make all of us sad because the month of Ramadan is going to be leaving soon. And we're going to be talking about that tomorrow. But it's not the end of our programs. No, because I invite all of you to the Muslim Treehouse. What in the world is the Muslim Treehouse? Glad you asked. We've got a video. We've all been there. That moment when we're trying to teach our kids about Islam. You better drink this. And it just feels forced. Drink the whole thing. Don't worry. We've got you covered. I'm excited to introduce you to the Muslim Treehouse, a global online classroom where Muslim kids from all across the world laugh, learn, and love Islam together. While our kids are on the front lines of a world that's getting crazier by the day, the way that we're teaching kids about Islam has pretty much stayed the same. Really? I guess you are right. Every month throughout the entire year, we provide a new four-week course where we discuss fundamental questions. How can prayer change my life? Why do Muslims eat halal? Allahu Akbar lasagna! Why must I treat elders with respect? Elders, very right. Oh, and by the way, 
Our programs are at different times so that families from all across the world can join live or watch a replay. Pretty nice! Yeah! Kids get to know other Muslims from all across the world through weekly global challenges. And you can pay what you want to join. Are they very nice? During our programs, we invite change makers, authors, athletes, poets, politicians, and more so that our kids get to meet real life role models. Okay, but who are you? Really? We started Noor Kids 10 years ago as students at Harvard University. And since then, we've created over 140 stories and served over 2 million Muslim children. Zabardas! We've developed an evidence-based curriculum focused on 36 topics related to character, beliefs, and citizenship, hakunas, or obligation towards humanity, that we use throughout all of the work we do at Noor Kids. 36? But why not 40? Seriously though, when I was a kid, I wasn't taught to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I did it because my mom and dad told me. Through the Muslim Treehouse, we have an opportunity to help our kids own their faith, to feel comfortable in their own skin, and perhaps most importantly, to feel happy, to feel blessed to be Muslim. Enroll now so that way your family can benefit. And inshallah, I can't wait to see you from the treehouse. So. All right, so here's the thing, you guys. Um, as we are getting ready for the end of the Ramadan camp, I do want to tell you what we've got planned. So today we've got a program, tomorrow we've got a program, and then after that, it's Muslim Treehouse. So in April, beginning next week, we're having fun for God's sake. So that's where we're going to be celebrating Eid. Um, for the entire month of April, and we've got a lot of amazing things in store. In May, uh, we're doing a course called Path of the Prophet, um, where we're learning about the Sunnah of our Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be on him, and how we can follow in his footsteps. In June, uh, we're doing uh, a deep dive into Islamic art to learn different forms of Islamic art and how we can um, learn it and actually practice it. And then in July, uh, we're meeting Muslim leaders from across the world. So we've got amazing programs set up for all of summer. And the truth is, you have the opportunity to join at norkids.com slash treehouse. The other biggest, nicest part of it you can contribute whatever you want to join. So if your family is able to contribute at any level, alhamdulillah, great. Otherwise, if you need to join for free, you can do that as well. So that's what we have coming up after the month of Ramadan. I want to share one last thing before we, we do Nearpod, and that is this. This is delicious. And the reason why this is delicious is because Islam is delicious. I know in there I said, oh, cough syrup. But we make Islam fun because Islam is fun, and that's why the Muslim Treehouse is so special. Okay, with that said, I asked you guys a question on Nearpod, and the question is, what are ways that you can worship Allah? Now, of course, worship means what? Worship means to honor, to show our appreciation, to dedicate our lives towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what are things that, you, that people have said? Ibrahim from Wiley, Texas says we can make dua. Sophia from the USA says prayer. Yara says, I pray, I say bismillah, and I love my sister. Okay. Fatima and Hamza say we can pray. All right. Um, let's see what else we got. Ooh, Mariam from Wisconsin says fast and be examples as Muslims. Geneva says salah, zakah, and doing what Allah asked us to do in learning about Islam. Okay, very good. Ramin says, you can worship Allah by praying and making dua and dhikr. Let's go to Ramin and see what she has to say here. Ramin from Mississauga, Ontario. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Ramin. Oh my goodness, I got to get you to unmute. Unmute. Oh, there we go. Assalamu alaikum, Ramin. Wa alaikum assalam. Oh my goodness, how are you doing, my dear? Super califragilistic, actually, awesome. Yes! Amazing, amazing. Good work. All right, so now, Ramin, um, let me ask you what are ways that we can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Uh, you can worship Allah by like praying and like doing things that He says to do in the Quran because it makes Allah happy. 
What about making like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Could that ever be a type of worship? I mean, if you do it for Allah, because you wanna, you wanna thank Him for the food that He gave you. What about playing a video game? Could you ever play a video game for the sake of Allah? If you wanna thank Allah that He like gave you lots of stuff. You're a smarty girl. You're saying all the right answers. I was hoping you would say no, brother. I mean, it's impossible. But you didn't say that. Ramin, how's your Ramadan going? Is it's going super? Is going super duper? It's going pretty well. Yeah. Do, do you guys have any plans for Eid yet? Uh, tomorrow my sister and her friends and I are gonna do our henna. For Eid. Inshallah, it'll look really beautiful. My daughter did hers last night. And I haven't seen it yet because I've been working, but inshallah it'll look good. And I hope you've been keeping your kids in your du'as. Have you been praying for us just a little bit? You have? Yes, Ramin! I love it. Thank you so much, my dear. Should we say psalms to one more person, do you think? Yeah. All right, let's do one more person. You guys, let's give Ramin from Mississauga a big round of applause. Big round of applause for Ramin. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. All right, let's see what else we've got here. Hmm, Samir from Virginia says, read Quran and do dua. You can also pray to him. Um, Bilal from Toronto says, there are many ways, but I like to make dua fast often and donate to charity. Hmm, now he's from Toronto. Ramin was also from Toronto. So let's try to go to someone from not Canada. Um, Zunera from New Jersey says, pray and make dua and fast and do the five pillars of Islam. Okay. All right. I love that. Um, Farah and Mariam says, read Quran, pray and read dua and think of him. Okay. Let's go to Farha and Mariam from the UK. I do worry that we may have called on them before. Let's see. Their name feels very familiar. Farah and Spotlight. No, we haven't. Assalamu alaikum, Farha and Maryam from the United Kingdom. How are you guys doing? Yes! Okay, who's Farha and who is Maryam? I'm Farha. I'm Maryam. Oh my goodness. You guys are the best. Now, you guys are in the United Kingdom. Is that true, what, what, what it's saying on Zoom? Yeah. yeah. And so when you guys drink, what do you guys normally drink when you're thirsty? Water. I'm sorry, you gotta say it louder. I can't hear you very well. Water. One more water. time, just louder. Water. Whoa, 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 whoa. I love it. I love it. Okay, so now let me go to you first, Fariha. Fariha, what are ways that we can worship <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or Farha, Farha, what are ways that we can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Um. You can uh, read du'a, um, and you can um, do things that remind you of Him. And why do you think we even need to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Like, why, why worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What do you think? You can help guide us in life. You can help guide us in life? Okay, very good. Now, Mariam, question for you. Do you think if we play football, that could be worship? Do you think that's possible? Yeah, maybe if you were like, uh, if it's like exercise for Allah, or like something like that. You guys are so smarty. I love it. Okay, very good. You guys, let's give Mariam and Farha a big round of applause. Big round of applause, okay? <laughs> All right, so now look, here's the thing. Imagine, right, like your mom or your dad who've given you every single thing known to man. They've given you your clothing and your food and your house and your car and your teacher and your education. And so what do you want to do? You want to love them with your whole heart, right? Because they've given you so much. The reason why we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is because we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our whole heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us everything, so we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show our Lord how much we appreciate Him. But the question is, how can we make our whole life worship? Not just the time when we're fasting, not just the time when we're praying, not just the time when we're doing tasbih, no, our whole entire life. Well, 
In order to answer that question, we are going to be reading a book. The story that I'm reading today is called Mindfully Muslim. It's from our book, For the Sake of God. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Asad is at Jumu'ah Salah with his family. Allahu Akbar, Jumu'ah is the best. That's on Fridays when you go to the masjid with everyone else. Listen carefully to the khutbah, Asad says, Dad. It's an important part of the prayers. And they're listening to the shaykh. What does the shaykh say? Remain focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the noble Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I did not create mankind except to worship me. Asad thinks to himself, only to worship? Hmm. Later that afternoon, Amin, call, uh, Amin calls. Asad, there's a soccer game at Basak Park. Want to go? Amin remembers what Sheikh Tahir said, except to worship me. Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, I have not created mankind except to worship me. That means the only reason why Allah created man is to worship. Um, actually, I'm busy, says Asad. Busy doing what? My prayers. But you did your prayers at the mosque. There's no limit to prayers, Amin, says Asad. Um, okay, all right. Maybe next time, says Amin. The next day, Amin visits Asad at his home. He knocks on Asad's door. Assalamu alaikum, Asad, says Amin. Wa alaikum salam, what's up, says Asad. The space race exhibit opens at the science museum today. Mom has tickets to take us. Um, sorry, Amin, I'm busy doing my prayers, says Asad. We can go after you pray, Asad. Well, um, actually, I'm going to be praying after I pray? Huh? Says Amin. Asad shuts the door and goes back to his prayer mat. So Asad's like praying a lot. On Sunday afternoon, Amin calls Asad again. Mom and I are making sandwiches for the homeless. Want to help? Asks Amin. Amin, didn't you listen to Sheikh Tahir's khutbah? Says Asad as he's on the other side of the phone. Sure I did. He said... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only made us to worship him. You should worship him like I am. Asad hangs up. Amin thinks to himself, maybe I should be praying like Asad too. Amin begins to feel uneasy. He goes to Sheikh Tahir for advice. Pause. Here's the thing. If you ever have a question about Islam and you don't know the answer, the best person you should go to outside of your mom and dad is your local sheikh. If you are blessed to have a resident scholar at your masjid, that person is there as a huge value for you. Take advantage. Go and speak with him. Ask them questions because they are likely going to be the best source of information for you. All right, let's go on. Amin tells Sheikh Tahir about his talk with Asad. My dear, what do you think it means to worship? Asks the Sheikh. Okay, pay attention, this is the important part. Praying and fasting, says Amin. Many of you guys on the Nearpod, when I asked you what does it mean to worship, you said praying, fasting, doing dua, reading Quran. Yes, these are types of worship. Worship means to serve and obey our Creator. Praying and fasting are ways to do that, but it doesn't end there, says the Sheikh. What do you mean? Every halal action that we perform for the sake of Allah is worship. Pay attention. Can going to the science museum be for the sake of Allah? Allah wants us to gain knowledge and strengthen our minds. If this is why we want to go, then yes, going to the science museum is worship. What about soccer? Can it be for the sake of Allah? Yes, says the Shaykh. If you do it to keep your body healthy and strong, our bodies are given to us by Allah and we have to take care of them. 
when we align our actions with our faith by making an intention, our every action becomes worship. I'm going to read that one more time because it's important. When we align our actions, that means the stuff we do, with our intentions, that means the reason why we do it, when we bring them together, that means our every action can become worship. Amin listens carefully to Sheikh Tahir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful that even remembering Him and appreciating what He has given us, that is worship. All right, I've said a lot of complicated things. I'm going to go to the audience for some questions, okay? First, so I'm going to go to, um, I'm going to go to maybe potentially another group from England, but it looks like their video just turned off, but maybe it's on. I don't know. Okay, hold on. Let's see. Um, bum, ba, da, dum, let's go to, oh, these guys look good. These guys look so nice. I'm going to go to Amal, Isa, and Noor from Ann Arbor. Oh my gosh, they look so nice. Assalamu alaikum, Amal, Isa, and Noor. Assalamu alaikum. I see Amal and Isa, but I don't know where Noor is. Is Noor hiding? Yeah, she's there. She's oh. playing on the phone. Oh, she's playing on the phone. Oh my goodness, that's okay. All right, so Amal, how old are you? Isa, how old are you? I'm nine. I'm five. You guys, I've been to Ann Arbor. There's a really big school there called the University of Michigan. I almost went to school there. You know that? Really? Yeah. Okay. And Michigan is kind of similar to Minnesota because they're both like M's. And anyways, okay. So I'm, I'm going to go to you first. I've been using this word called intention. Did you hear me say that word before? Yeah. Amal, um, what does an intention mean? Like, what, what, is, what does that word even mean? It means when you try to do something. And your intention is what? Is your intention, like, the reason why you do something? It's like when I, like, if I want to go, a tree. I intend to do it. So it so, means I want to do it. Yeah. So let me, let me help you out a little bit because an intention is slightly different. Okay. I want you to say Nia. Can you say Nia? Nia. Okay. And uh, Isa, can you say Nia? Nia. 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 Very good. So niya is the Arabic word for intention, okay? And intention is the reason why we do what we do. Let me give an example, okay? Say, for example, <clears throat> I am donating $10, okay? There's people who are poor and I want to donate $10. That's the action. The niya or the intention is why I am donating. Now, I can donate for many reasons, Amal. I can donate, one, because I want Allah to be happy with me. So, I, you know, my action is I'm giving $10, and my niya is what? Because I want Allah to be happy with me. Or, it could be like this. My action is I'm giving $10, but what is my intention? I want everyone to see that I am so generous, and they're going to see how I gave $10. But that's not generous. But that's not generous. But so do you see how the same action, one has a good intention for the sake of Allah, and one has a not so good intention. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So an intention or a niya is why we do what we do. So let me ask you one more time, Noor, or uh, Amo. What is mm -hmm. an intention? Intention is what? Mm -hmm. It means why we, you, why we do something. Exactly. Very good. Can we do a ding, ding, ding? Yep, one sec. Very good. 
So an intention is why we do what we do. Now in this story, Sheikh is saying we can turn all of our actions into worship, like soccer and going to the museum. How can we turn all of our actions into worship, um, Amo? We can do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can we do another ding, ding, ding? Yep. Yes, you're on a roll. So look, if we do whatever we're doing to please our Lord, say for example, I'm going to work out. Now, if I'm going to exercise, I can go exercise for two reasons. One is I want to exercise so that way everyone looks at me and says, Oh, Brother Amin is so strong. That could be one. Another reason mm -hmm. why I work out is to say, Allah gave me this body. I want to make this body as strong as possible so that way I can become the best version of myself. It's the same action working out, but one has a good intention and one doesn't. Similarly, mm -hmm. going to the museum. One person can say, hey, I'm going to the museum because through the museum, I'm going to learn. And when I learn, inshallah, I'm going to become the best version of myself for the sake of God. Another person can say, I'm going to the museum so that way I can, you know, waste time uh, because I have nothing better to do. And I just, you know, I have nothing else to do in my life. It's the same action, but there's two intentions. One is good, one's not good, okay? So in our life, if we set the right... What was the Arabic word for intention? Do you remember, um, Isa? Niya. Yes! Ding, ding, ding. Uh, so if we set the right niya, everything we do in our life can become worship. You guys did a great job. You guys, can we give Amal, Isa, and Noor from Ann Arbor, a big Noor Kids round of applause, big round of applause for these guys. Those are tough questions, you guys. Honestly, those ones were tough ones. They did great. Okay, let's go on. Let's go on. Thanks again, Sheikh Tahir. Oh, and last thing, we'll be making sandwiches for the homeless today. Peanut butter and marmalade, asks the Sheikh. No doubt, says Amin. All praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Lord of the world. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Insha'Allah, I will join. Amin leaves to go, uh, leaves the masjid. When he gets home, he calls Asad. Salam, Asad. Alaikum salam. Can you come over? It depends. Can we pray at your house? Sure, says Amin. Amin hangs up and prepares the ingredients for the sandwiches. When Asad arrives, he sees all of his friends from Northport Elementary at Amin's house. Grab a spoon and join us. We're making sandwiches for the homeless, says Ethan. Do you know where Amin is? I need to talk to him, says Asad as he's got a prayer bead and his face is all red. Asad finds Amin in the next room. What are you doing, Amin? You should be praying. That's the thing, Asad. There are other ways to worship too. Don't be silly. Don't be silly. Bodhogya. Stop this. Cut it out. Come on. It's enough. Stop it. Don't be silly, Amin. Don't. Bas. Come on. I've had enough. I'm tired, man. Other types of worship. Come on. What is he thinking? Come on! Okay, back to the story. Sorry, I was just, I was just trying to be a little bit dramatic, you know, because sometimes, you know, we all need a little bit of, just a little bit of drama. Told us, a little bit of drama. What's that, you want more? Drama? They want more. Jake, they said they want more drama. Should I give them what they want? <gasps> don't be silly! I was like, just don't! Just like, don't be silly! Cause like... You're saying that there's like, other types of worship, and like... I'm trying to let you know, okay? I just need you to under- Okay, alright, that's enough, that's enough. Alright, that's- That was too much. 
guys. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Don't be silly, says Asad. Prayer is worship. I need to go. Asad is about to storm out of the house, and then he sees Sheikh Tahir. Oh, my youthful friends, how can I help the good cause, says the Sheikh. Grab a spoon from Ethan and join us, says Amin. Sheikh Tahir goes inside to find Ethan. How did Sheikh Tahir end up here, says Asad. I went to the mosque today to talk to him about you. About me? Yeah, I was worried that I needed to pray like you are. But I learned that when we do things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it can be worship, he thinks to himself. But how can we serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by making sandwiches? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us to take care of the poor and we're giving these sandwiches to poor people who really need them. Ah, I understand, says Asad. Just as the boys finish the conversation, Sheikh Tahir joins them. Whatever you boys are doing, I need you to stop. Is it Salah time, asks Amin. No, but it is time to say Bismillah and try one of these sandwiches. Mmm, says Amin as he takes a bite. Worship has never tasted so good. The now look, there are ways that we worship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has specifically asked us to do. Fasting during the month of Ramadan, if we're old enough and if we're healthy and we can. Praying five times a day. Going for hajj at some point in time in our life. Giving in zakah and giving charity. Reading the Quran. These are all forms of worship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us to do and we should do them. But beyond that, you and me can make every moment of our life worship. When you go to school, if before you go to school you think to yourself, Ya Allah, I hope I'm making you happy, your school becomes worship. If you are going for soccer practice, and before you go to soccer practice, you think to yourself, Ya Allah, I hope that I can make you happy. Your soccer practice becomes worship. Even when we eat, if before we eat we say, Bismillah rahman rahim we remember our Creator, then even that eating becomes worship. And that is one of the most incredible things that I think about as we're ending this holy month of Ramadan. Yes, this month has been incredible, whose minutes are better than any other minutes, whose hours are better than any other hours, where there's only a few more minutes and hours left. But after this month, remember, we can worship any day at any time if we set the right intention. Now the other thing to remember is good actions they can become bad with the wrong intentions. Oh, I'm giving in charity, but not for the sake of Allah. I'm giving in charity because I want everyone to see how generous I am. Mm? That's not a very good intention. Oh, I'm praying because I want everyone to see how a good Muslim I am, how many rakah I pray for so long. Mm? That's not a very good intention. As we end the month of Ramadan, we inshallah make an intention to say, Ya Allah, allow us to be your humble servants and be the best version of ourselves. Now, speaking of people who are the best version of themselves, today we are going to be meeting someone named Senator Zainab Muhammad. And then after that, we are going to be giving away millions and millions but before we do, I need to talk about Callbox, all right? Now, many of you guys may not know what Callbox is, and I am going to tell you what Callbox is. Callbox is our sponsor for the day. Now, um, many of you guys might like to look at things on TV or on screens, YouTube, yada, yada, yada. Um, and of course, Nora Kids is awesome, but there's more than just Nora Kids. 
Callbox is a streaming platform for Muslim families. They have things like Little Amar, and they have things for parents as well. And right now, families are able to try it for free. We actually have a link that we sent. Uh, if you go to noorkids.com slash callbox, Q-A-L-B-O-X, your parents can give it a try, and they will, inshallah, be able to uh, try it uh, at, uh, uh, for free, actually. And so uh, they're one of our sponsors for this entire month of Ramadan. Uh, and so we really appreciate them. And it's, I think, a really great opportunity for every Muslim family that's looking for a good streaming alternative. Okay, with that being said, I'd love for you guys to meet Senator Zainab Muhammad. Bismillah rahman rahim Agents of change. When there are problems, we as Muslims step forward and try to come up with solutions. Now today, we are at the Minnesota State House. And the reason why is because we are meeting the youngest ever senator in the state of Minnesota. Her name is Zainab Muhammad. And by the way, she happens to be Muslim. As a senator, her job is to help make the world a better place for citizens in Minnesota. And the reason why Kauthar, Qasim, and you are coming with me is because my hope and my dream is for every single one of us to become an agent of change to help make the world a better place like Senator Zainab. So, let's meet her. Do you remember your first day? It was such a blur. I woke up at 3 a.m. just like, being nervous. I had already won my election. You go through this election that's sort of like a little bit intense, sort of was like unpredictable at times. And then I won and I felt good about it. But then like it blows up and there's like a whole world of like media. Like you just sort of feel like your life is spinning and out of control in a way. I like grew up as Muslim. So I always had this faith of like whatever Allah wills, like nothing can change. The, right the night before I got sworn in, I was at my mom's house and she's like, you just need to pray Sakara and like just start your day healthy and like wake up early, you know? And so I got up, I prayed. The Imam met us here and we did our swearing in. Really? Yeah, and it was like, all my friends were getting sworn in on like books that they loved, but like I wanted to be sworn in on the Quran because I felt like, this being Muslim was like such a big part of my life. Like yeah. I, grew, I was born Muslim, grew up in Islam, and like throughout the campaign, throughout in between that time of being sworn in, it was like the faith that sort of like kept me going in some ways. Like hmm. it's made me more spiritual. Assalamualaikum, Marquez. Today I have a question for Senator Zaina Muhammad. My first question is, how do you became a hijabi? How did I become a hijabi? Well, like, I feel like, you know, I was born in a Muslim country. I had never lived in a world at that time where people didn't wear a hijab. My grandma, my great grandma, my family, everybody, everyone was wearing a yeah. hijab. So yeah. it was the norm. And like, I think that becoming a hijabi is, is like, obviously, like, I think hijab is a journey. Islam is a journey for each individual who is practicing the faith and how they want to do it. You know, I've got nieces and nephews, nieces that don't wear hijab and probably will never. And that's like how they practice their faith and they're still able to be Muslim. It's not about the, like, the piece of cloth that's in your head that you're wearing. It's like the pride that comes with it. And like, I had met with a group of Muslim people who were national before I when I was running and they had said to me like we could have 10 Muslim men be elected it is so important that you're there so because how? like your hijab and the fact that you take pride in in being this woman who dresses modestly means that like, like everybody can see you are representative of billions of people not just your district and yeah. so I always keep that in mind that's so so incredible as as Muslims right Kothar it's, if someone sees me in the street, they might think I'm Muslim, they might not know, but if they see a, a, a woman wearing a hijab, they'll know that that person is a Muslim. They're the kind of the flag bearers of the faith. Um, there were like a lot of imams who just, I had respected over the years who've been a part of my life, huh. who are now like, you better do the right thing. And I'm like, what's the right thing? Like, look, there's so many different 
people, right? So Kothar, we call them cons constituents. 80,000. 80,000 people. So there's 80,000 people who cannot be here, but Senator Zainab is a representative, and those are called her cons constituents. Some people want to go up, some people want to go down. Some people's favorite color is red, some people's favorite color is blue. Some people might want $15 for minimum wage, some people might not. Right? Some people might want universal health care, some people might not. So there's so many different people. How do you, like, not just among your constituents, but also like when you think about all oh, the imams and these people, like, how do you balance all of that? I often say, like, your local community will, like, give you a lot of pressure on the issues that it's easier to figure out where the district is at because you live there and you sort of know what the community supports but then they in the Muslim community like it's a vast it's a big community that not everybody th we're not monolith like, right? yeah like, we everyone's don't all different think the same everybody thinks differently but the thing that anchors us all is like God and faith it's so often like even when we disagree it's like the one thing that I keep in mind is like God and Allah so today I'll be asking Zainab Muhammad a question. What made you become successful in your life? I think what made me successful is the belief I have in myself, the belief I have in our community. What motivated you to say, hey, I'm going to do this? I think I'm like, in a way, a daredevil. So I've had like one, so like 2020 happened. George Floyd was murdered in our in our community. That sort of was like an outrageous moment for me and for everybody around, especially if you've lived in South Minneapolis your whole life. No matter what, like I believed in our community so much and they believed in me. And so like the idea that I could overcome anything was the fact that like I was able to believe in my abilities and my capabilities, that I was ready, um, that I had done what I needed to do to be in a place where I was in a position of leadership. Is it easy to believe in yourself all the time? Not always. There are moments where I, where, where like, you may not believe in yourself, where you don't know you can do it. But like, if you try, it's pretty surprising. Cause I think if you don't try because you think you might fail, that like you've already failed. My my senator retired. Everybody was like, you need to run. So there was like a whole campaign that was called hashtag Run Zainab Run to like, oh, really? influence me to run. Yeah. And I was like, this is so intense. And it was all my neighbors, like people I've known in the community for a long time. And the current senator at the time who decided not to run called me and said, hey, you should think about running. And I said, oh, okay, will you support me? And she said, oh no, you still have to prove yourself, uh. but you should consider it. And so I was like, oh, like who does that? Yeah. Like, how are you gonna call me and tell me, but then say, I'm not gonna support you. Yeah. And then, you know, people in my inner community were like, you're just, you don't have it in you. Like, you're just not gonna do it. And I was like, screw this. In the beginning, it was sort of this idea of like, yeah, I can. Yeah. And I'm gonna show you. You're gonna prove it to them. Yeah, and then over time, I think it just, like, obviously, like, after your nods, you're just sort of like, but like, why and what's my reasoning? And you sit down and you're just like, this is actually what I want, is for people to have access to government. Especially when you say, like, government that represents the people. And so, mm. I was like, well, I'm doing it. Mm. So here we are. <laughs> That's awesome. So typically like on a regular day when we're in session like tomorrow, walking up here is like hundreds of lobbyists just lined up to just grab you and talk to you. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, 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 so can you explain to Kothar what is a lobbyist? Lobbyist is somebody who either works for an organization um, who uh, or, you know, is like pushing for a particular issue or a bill. So I'm say, for example, Kothar, right? Like, say, because, you know, Senator Zainab, she's one of the people who gets to make the laws. So say, for example, you are a company that really wants to pay your employees $15. Well, you can lobby her and say, Senator Zainab, I really want you to do this. This is why you should do this. But if you're a company who says no, we don't want to do that. Then they'll grab her and say, you know, Senator Zainab, it's a bad idea. Let me tell you what's a bad idea. It's called a lobbyist. Okay, but baby, look at this. Insane. So we actually, that thing is a light, it's a chandelier. Oh, wow. And now it's on when you go outside every single night. Oh, really? Yeah, and it's 
So when at night, when I'm in my office, the, there's like, the capital is like a light. The other thing you'll notice, Gother, about these murals, can I tell you one thing? <laughs> They're all white people. <laughs> yeah. Right? You'll never see a hijabi here, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's, it's kind of cool and that represents it, right? Because Senator Zainab, she was not born here. Mm -mm. You were born in Somalia. Mm -hmm. What was it like to become a Muslim senator? And also, what inspired you to become one? What made me run for uh, this seat, or like made me want to run as a Muslim, is the idea that there wasn't a single person who looked like me who was representing our community. We went through a Trump administration, which was really horrifying for our community with the Muslim ban. and. What I learned from that is like uplifting being a Muslim is the only way that people will hear us. Maybe we can get through it this way. Okay. I don't know if we can, but we can try. I'm hoping it lets us in the chamber. When it's like prayer time and we're in session, I'll go into like Senator Champion's office because he has oh. an office in here and he knows. So I'll just like pray in there. This is so cool. Beautiful. You know what it makes me think of, Kothar? So what Senator Zainab was saying was that like, so she's one of the politicians, right? She's one of the people. So everyone wants to talk to her, everyone wants to meet her. Why? Because they think, well, maybe Senator Zainab can help her. And it's tough because she's one human being. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of people who probably want to meet with her, but it's tough. And even if they meet with her, doesn't necessarily mean that like she can do something about it. Mm -hmm. And it makes me think about God. Because go through Nord, like think about it, right? Like, you know, every time we pray, it's like we have a meeting with Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is never busy for us. And like, you know, in the same way that there's such like a beautiful door that's like protected and like we can't go in, even if we wanna go in, like we wanna go, we can't go in, it's locked. But with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the door is always open, right? And so we can always access our creator and that's that's really special. I think about that with like important people because you know, it's, it's, um, the most important is God. God, absolutely. All right, let's go. How does being Muslim impact the work that you do? In my faith, the one thing that is clear is like you have to have integrity in the process, in that process of whatever you're doing. And so no matter what I'm doing, I'm always considering like, am I being, am I having integrity in that process? Am I being purposeful? Am I being kind and empathetic towards an issue or a group of people I don't necessarily agree with? and navigating it while also uplifting that like being Muslim is like a good thing and hmm. it is normal and it is okay. What is this? That was, we were on the floor, just like talking. This was the day that we signed driver's licenses into law, which was the first bill I did. So I passed it at 2 a.m. on a, like the biggest snowfall that we had that year. Oh my goodness. And the entire community was here. It was like 3,000 people that filled the floors of the wow. Capitol. Wow. Had been waiting for hours and they had been told we should push the bill because it's so snowy and we don't want you guys to be in. And they were like, no, we've been waiting for this for 10 years. So I was like, I'm committed to getting it done with them. Yeah. When we didn't, everybody comes down, there's all these flowers being handed to them and all these members are like, who are all these immigrants? Like, they're just confused. Yeah. And so that same member comes up to me two days later and he goes, I just want to tell you, like, you did a fantastic job defending your bill on the floor. Uh. And I was like, I'm so happy I could teach you a thing or two. Yeah. <laughs> As I think about some of the things that you've really championed, right? So you've championed, hey, we want a $15 minimum wage, universal health care, which is health care for everyone, safety and security. Now, w when I think about that, what I hear is, this is someone who cares about people who are less fortunate, mm -hmm. right? Who benefits from $15? People who are going through difficulty. Who benefits from universal health care? Well, people who don't have health care. Yeah. My holy prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings, he was an orphan. Yeah. Right? It's my job to take care of the people who have the least. How do you send food to, pe to people in places that far away? I think it's important to talk about that, like, Palestinian people deserve a self-determination and it is okay to uplift a group of people who are struggling currently, dying their voices, and that is something that everybody should be able to do without them being afraid of what might or may not happen send aid where we can and also when they don't have a voice at the table be that voice for them so someone asks you okay are you american 
Are you Muslim? Are you both? How do you respond? I'm Muslim American. And you're part of the Norikids family. <laughs> what does the future look like for you? I think the future is bright. I think the future is hopeful. Three more years, two more sessions after this. Um, and I'm hopeful that I will get more things done this session. And inshallah, we win the majority again next term. And if that happens, I have a lot more things I want to get done before the four years is up. I want to get minimum wage up. I want to do one iftar for the community. Maybe this year, inshallah, I don't know. Um, but I, I think that the future is, is, is good for us, for our community. I want more sisters in, in these seats. I want another sister to run. It would make my world and I don't know. I'm just hopeful. Senator Zain Muhammad, thank you so much. We wish you all the best, inshallah. And may Allah make it easy for you. Put bark on your efforts. Mm -hmm. Continue to put sincerity in all of your intentions. Um, and um, allow you to be a vessel through which God works. Masha Allah, Masha Allah, Masha Allah. Senator Zainal, she did such a good job. And you know, the thing I think sometimes, you know, I came from Pakistan many years ago, you know, and now these days, our Muslim kids here in America, you know, they are doing so many big, big things, you know. Some people are going to become politician, some people going on the news. Okay, I saw on TV, television these days, CNN, different, different things, okay. And for everyone who's watching today, truly, seriously, honestly, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seriously, that you become the future of our, not just country, but the whole world, okay? And because of the faith in your heart, because you are part of the Ummah of our Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be on him, you have a unique ability to, inshallah, do good. Oh my goodness, so nice. Now, here's the thing. I have to be honest with you. I, Mr. Amin, sometimes I make it sound like maybe I don't want to be here. Like I have different places to be. You know, because I'm, I'm heart surgeon. You know, I have lots of things going on. Sometimes I make it sound like maybe I'm too busy. Truth is though, I don't want to say goodbye to you guys. I really actually enjoy seeing you guys so much, you know. Sometimes I think, man, you know, this community, this community is so nice, okay. So that's why today I'm telling you, don't, don't let this be the goodbye. We don't have to say goodbye now, okay. We have one more program tomorrow, but also, but also, I have talked to Brother Amin and they have gotten these Noor Kids backpacks, so nice backpack, top of the line, cream of the crop, made in India. What is this made in India? What is this made in, it's not made in Pakistan. This doesn't make sense. India, made in India. Okay, no problem. It's fine. It might be made in India, no problem, but it is a very, very nice backpack and we are giving it away for every person who joins Muslim Treehouse and contributes, inshallah. Here's the thing, after the month of Ramadan, every Thursday, every Saturday, we do the live programs and these programs, Allahu Akbar, so good, so good. Is so good and also we need your support so join Muslim tree house okay if you want to join for free you can do that no problem we will serve you but if you are able to contribute such that you benefit and also we can support our efforts just like any other community inshallah for the sake of Allah we will also send you a backpack as a gift okay just to say thank you so very much with that Ladies and gentlemen, boys and the girls, tomorrow is the final day in the Newark Kids Tree House. We are, oh, one last thing, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah. 
Brother Jake, can you go on the YouTube and see the number of subscribers? Allahu Akbar. We want to do a big giveaway. Brother Amin told me that they want to do a trip to the Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic. But they cannot do it unless they get 85,000 subscribers. Allahu Akbar. They are 84,144 right now. This is not this is not good this is not a good it is 84144 they need to get to 85 by tomorrow if they cannot get to 85 by tomorrow they cannot be the giveaway i do not think i do not think i'm not sharing my i don't have the plug it's it's okay okay but bottom line is this bottom line is this if you guys want us to do the biggest giveaway in the Noor Kids century, okay, we need to get to 85. If we don't get to 85, then that cannot happen. It's not a good. So please, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, do join. Subscribe to the YouTube so that way we can do the giveaway. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Inshallah, we will see you tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Goodbye, everybody. It was a good one. How much he did? Good job. A senator so young, you know. I did. But how did they make?